Today I would like to share with you guys what is the role of an animation programmer. I worked with quite a few over the years and I can tell you that you should be the best friend of an animation programmer because these guys can help you a ton to make sure the animations look as good as possible. A few months ago I did a video about the role of a technical animator and you opened your eyes about what kind of roles exist behind the scenes in games. Now. Another unsung hero that people don't talk about enough is the animation programmer. Now, the animation programmer, and I'm gonna explain this in the best way I know how, and if you are an animation programmer, definitely comment below and uh, add to my explanation here because you guys can do a much better job than I can at explaining this. But from my perspective, over the years that I've worked in the industry, uh, I'm going to explain to you guys exactly how essential an animation programmer is to a gameplay animator like myself to make sure that my animations look as cool as possible. For those that don't know me, my name is Harvey Newman. I'm a gameplay animator. I've been in the games industry for about 20 years and I recently left my job as an animation director to actually fulfill the dream to actually do these videos for you guys on a full-time basis and I'm loving my time explaining to you guys this behind the scenes of games, game production and how games are made. So when I started animating, animation for games was basically like voodoo, right? Like black magic. You don't know exactly what goes on, you just know that it happens, it's a thing, and you need it in order to make games, right? So as you start kind of like working in games as an animator, you start seeing that there is a lot of roles that are essential or live around you that you need to start learning how to deal with them or at least know what they do so you can make yourself your life a little easier. Now, one of those roles is the technical animator. I'm not gonna go into it this video because I already did a video about that. Go and check it out. I'll leave a link somewhere. But the other role that is really essential for you guys to know is the uh, animation programmer or the animation engineer, uh, depending on the studio, names change. Now, same thing, but what this role does is the following. When the project is just getting started, right, before the animators can actually start creating content, normally there's a whole layer of code that needs to be introduced in order to set up the program the best way possible. Now this process is incredibly important because depending on the engine, depending on how things are actually first set up, this might be the best project ever or the most difficult project ever. And there's also something to do with legacy, right? Some projects have been set up 20 years ago uh, in a certain way and then because maybe things have changed over time, nowadays AAA studios struggle with making things fit that are new within the old, right? This is why animation programmers or programmers in general, I should say, are so essential because they create the backbone of the game, right? Where all the content needs to sit in. So this is all engineers, all programmers need to actually do that, right? Within programming, within engineering, there are specific roles that different engineers have. And one of those roles is animation specific engineers or programmers, right? So this is where we start to intersect animation, animation and uh, engineering. Here's how things used to work back in the day. You used to actually just create an animation in Maya, right? Export it as an FBX, which is basically a container. And then you just, you would give it to somebody, normally an engineer, so they can actually put it in an engine and then codify it. And then it shows up in game and then the animation plays, right? You see the results and then you, you the animator, go back and then tweak it because now the animation is in engine, is easier to update because the asset is already there. The only thing you have to do is export and then click a button, updates, and now things are better, right? This is how it used to work before. But now, through the magic of visual scripting, aka blueprints or animation trees or whatever you want to call it, basically is a visual way of representing code. Now, us animators have more power on creating uh, things visually, right? So you guys, if you don't know about blueprints, definitely go and check it out. Basically what you have is a visual way for you to connect things and set up things in a really nice way. And this anybody can do with a little bit of technical knowledge, you can actually set up a basic blueprint that gets the character to idle, 
to walk, to punch, to kick, to shoot and all that stuff. So you don't need uh, like a, an engineer, a programmer to do those things, right? Normally the technical animator uh, gets to do those things or the animator, if it's an experienced animator that actually has a lot of technical knowledge, gets to set up those things. Now, this is today, things are much more uh, independent. So you, the animation department, gets to do all these things. The animation uh, engineering comes through normally towards the beginning when they want to set up a pipeline that works well for both the engineering team and the animation team. Once those things are set up, they leave the animation team by themselves so they can actually set out the, the systems they need to actually implement, um, if things work, if they don't work, and then only get called when something is completely outside the box. So we need a horse to be in this game, right? And there's been no horses in this game previous. How can we get a horse to behave like a horse in our game that only had bipeds, that only had people, right? At that point, you call the engineer and you sit down and then you go, how can we actually make it a horse? And can we actually make it? What do we need to do? What's the budget? How many people? How long? All these other things, right? So they are incredibly important to set up things. They're also coming to play towards the end of the pipe. Because what happens is with all this visual scripting thing that I was just talking about, right? Blueprints and setting up and all that stuff. It gives people a lot of independence uh, and animators a lot of independence because, you know, engines like Unreal have been incredibly nice to us visual people. But at some point in time, especially on a tri AAA uh, project, they need to actually be optimized so they don't take as much space as possible. And games need to be as small as possible, even though games have been getting bigger um, in terms of size but they need to still be as small as possible. Something that is manageable is downloadable and you can actually you know, download it and you don't have to spend three days downloading it. So games aim to be as small as possible. And this is why after all the visual scripting, after all the blueprints are set up and anima the animation team got its way and got things to look really nice and beautiful and feeling good, they need to pass it along to an engineer so they can actually go and, for example, in a reel, they actually C++ or codify the visual scripting into a way that actually looks like as good as in, in game, but is much smaller and much more efficient in, in the game, right? So you run smaller. And this is incredibly important because um, if it wasn't for them, if it was everything blueprint and things are getting better, um, mind you, but the game would have been huge, right? So animation engineers are really important for all these reasons that I mentioned before. And they kind of like also uh, are great at debugging animations and issues and when things don't work. Now, another section that I didn't mention uh, that I should mention briefly is networking. So if your game is actually um, an online game and there's an element of being networked, so you have to play with other players, uh, animation engineer is absolutely essential because you have capsules, you have things colliding, things shooting at each other, they have to hit at a specific time, they have to fall at a specific time, they have hit reacts. All of these things need to be actually codified because every game is different. So hopefully after all this stuff that I just mentioned, um, you get to have a certain feeling of why animation engineering or programming is so important. And you should definitely befriend your animation engineer because they're absolutely incredible. And when you find a good one, then it makes your work so much easier and better. And you can push boundaries and make things happen that haven't been seen before. And that's exactly where you want to be. So that is about it. Um, now, for all those that are still with me, for all those that are enjoying this video, definitely drop a like, a subscribe, because it would help me immensely to grow my channel, to make sure that more people see this thing. I would also like to ask you guys to visit my Patreon page, because all the money that I receive via Patreon goes directly to this channel to make it better, to make it a little bit more uh, enticing for people to actually come along and get this knowledge from behind the scenes for games. And that is all I had for you guys. I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. And until then, stay well, stay safe. Peace.